we are a generation that can be heroes or we can be villains. And it's easy to be a villain because sometimes it's hard to know the difference between good and evil. It gets confusing. To me, it's, it's gotten really clear lately. But it can be difficult to see. And you can get frustrated and tired. You can be afraid. And by not standing, you become a villain. So we really need to look ourselves and find out what's inside of each one of us that we're afraid of and conquer it. We need to know who we are and then we need to know what we're for. It's not enough anymore to be against something. I am so tired of being against the communists, the progressives, the insanity that is today. We need to be for something. We need to be for an idea. We have to know our why. Why are we here? Let me show you some things on the, uh, on the chalkboard. If we're here for freedom, let me ask you, what does freedom mean? I've tried to answer that for a while to myself. I was over in England, and they all claim to be free. Not to my understanding of freedom. So what does freedom even mean? Well, let's get a couple of things straight here. Left and right. In Europe, what is the left? Communism, go on, say it. It's communism. Communism is on the, uh, on the left. Now we're talking Europe. What is the far right in Europe? Fascism. So you have fascism on this side. But that's the European right. And what they, they go through are times when they go between fascist and communist back and forth, and hopefully they can hold themselves in the middle long enough to have a breath that they claim is freedom. This is the European model. In America, communists on the right or the left? The left. Where are fascists? Thank you. Fascists are on the left as well. What about Iran? Is that right or left, a theocracy? Is that right or left? It is a left. All of anything that is uh, uh, anything that is authoritarian in America, and this is what makes us different. It's not like this any place else in the world, because any place else in the world went from king or king, control or control. And so they were used to that, but that's not what we were. What is the far right in America? Freedom. The extreme right. Thank you. Anarchy. That's the extreme right. So when they say, oh, these right wing extremists, they just want to be Nazis, they might be talking to a crowd in Europe, but not here in America. If you're a right wing extremist, you want no government. So now where were we at the beginning? At the beginning with the Articles of Confederation, we were there. Our founders wanted a government so small that it was almost anarchy, but not quite. It was just out of the reach of anarchy. But they made the government and the Articles of Confederation too small. So we had to abolish that. And then we put the Constitution just a little farther away. And then, over time, we keep moving until we're right about here now. We are within the reach of a tyrant 
from the right or the left. It doesn't matter what they call it. If it's on the extreme left in America, it is totalitarianism. We are not Europe. Our constitution is supposed to put us here, but what happens is left and right in America, they start having an argument. Here's the Democrats, here are the Republicans. Because of progressivism, they're both pretty much saying the same thing, and they're just both moving this direction. That's what we have to break. We have to go back, move them back this way. By knowing what fascism is, knowing what communism is, knowing what progressivism is. Progressivism is just the idea of moving slowly, progressing towards this side of the chalkboard. That's what makes us different. And the reason why this is happening to us is because we don't, we've never read our owner's manual, ever. We've never read it. I mean, if something goes wrong with your car, you know, you read the owner's manual, you find out exactly what to do. Guys are notorious for never reading the owner's manual. Well, I stand here today to tell you for 40 years, I never read the owner's manual of the United States of America. It's the Constitution is our owner's manual. Without that, we're lost. That's why we're having the problems that we're having now. We have lent our authority, which we're supposed to do, lend our authority, because the power comes from the people. And we find good people who are supposed to be like us, who swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. They go. But they keep failing us over and over and over again. Why? Because we didn't understand our responsibility and our role for far too long. I'm mainly talking to the people my age and above. This next generation, you are the hero. You are the generation that will come and either destroy it or fix it. And I know you will stand to fix it. I think we have treated our, our rights and our responsibilities and our Constitution a little like an iPhone. We're treating Washington, D.C. as if it's an Apple store. We just bring it in and go, it's broken, I don't know what to do, fix it. That's not leading. Have you ever noticed that when something becomes very unpopular, less so lately, very unpopular with the people, what happens? The politicians follow the people because we are the ones with the power. So how much do we know about our Constitution? What do we know? We are not a democracy. We are a... Say it again like you mean it. We, a democracy is one man. Thank you. Do we have one man, one vote in this country? We do for part one. You, the one man, walks in and votes for one representative. And then that representative is supposed to represent you and do all the voting on things that none of us have the time to do. It's exactly the way our police force is supposed to be. The police, we ask the police, we hire them, we lend our rights to make sure our home is safe, our neighborhood is safe, to catch the bad guy. We loan them those rights so we can go to work, so we can go to a movie, we can do whatever it is we have to do in life, and the police officer works for us using our rights, our police they don't have any more rights than you have. How could they? Their rights that they are exercising to keep law and order come from 
say it like you mean it, come from us. They come from us. We cannot forget our role and our responsibility and the roles of those who are supposed to protect and serve us. So they're supposed to represent us, but they don't. This is the problem in the entire world right now. The entire world seems to be on fire from Hong Kong to the Netherlands to England. Why? This is not a battle between Republicans and Democrats. They're playing the same game, one's just a lot faster than the other. We are not battling this. We are battling two things. We are battling out of control uh, aristocrats that believe that they know better. That's why everyone on the world right now is looking at their government saying, what are you doing? That's not what we want. They believe they know better than you and me. So they're doing it because you're just the little people. You don't know. It's like, honestly, it's like when you buy a lawnmower and it says, do not use on roof. <laughs> Are we that stupid? We're not that, well, I think probably somebody was that stupid. But I believe, you know, survival of the fittest. If you're using your lawnmower on the roof, maybe you should go. <laughs> right now in America, the left says that they are fighting the tyranny of the majority of white people, of Christians, of people who believe in America, the people who have had power for so long. And by doing so, we are now experiencing the tyranny of the minority. Both of these things are wrong. And the reason why it's happening is we have forgotten what is a republic, why it's important, what our role is. We have checks and balances. We have how many branches of government? What are they? Okay, all right. You didn't get him in the same order, but I'm gonna let you slide on that one. Some say there's a fourth branch, and that fourth branch is? The media. How is it all four branches have failed? They have all failed because we have failed in our duty. We're not taking our constitution, our, our, our liberty seriously. We're taking them to an Apple store. We have to pay attention. And that's why you're here. You are the first to truly start to wake up and stand up. You are the leaders of freedom and liberty in the world. We don't have shame anymore. There is no such thing as shame. You can do anything you want. You could take money from China, do blow off the belly of a hooker, and nobody says anything. <laughs> nobody cares. It's totally fine. Taking money from foreign countries, that's not shameful. I'm still proud of my son. Are you? Really? You sound to me like a crappy dad, but maybe that's just me. You can break the law and develop a virus in conjunction with China, then cover all of that up, close the world down, be responsible for millions of deaths, an economy just blowing it up in, over the entire world, telling people, taking their God-given right away to make their own medical decisions, to be able to tell their doctor, I don't, don't, I don't want to listen to them, what's your opinion? Taking that away, and yet no one has paid a price. That cannot stand. 
shame on you. Shame on all of those involved. The only thing we have now is brand shame. You're not wearing the right clothes. You're not part of the right team. You're for the wrong candidate. Shame on you. We need a return of actual shame. You're doing coke off the belly of hookers. Shame on you. Shame. The only way there is shame in America right now is if you believe in true justice, blind justice, limited rights for the uh, government, and merit. We're a country that was built on merit. I love coming out to the West. I was just telling my wife backstage, I hate the East so much. I really do. The East of America, it's always hot, it's always humid. There's no mountains, there's no mark of Americans saying, you know what? Get the kids in the wagon. We're going over that. I wouldn't have done it. I would have been the biggest wimp. No way, uh-uh, not going there. But we did it. And we didn't do it by, excuse the language, being pussies. We're Americans. There's something different about us. And we need to remember that. I would tell you that I think America has become godless, but I don't think it has. We have plenty of gods. We worship them all the time. We have fame. We worship that. We worship fortune, power, drugs, sex. We're now worshiping the planet, the planet above all things, gender, race, political power, political parties, even political politicians. They are not our gods. God is our God. These are false gods. And these false gods, along with hubris, will take us down the darkest paths men have ever gone down. And we will make, we will make those who dabbled in darkness in the 1930s look like rookies with our technology, our money, and our global reach. It is imperative that we know who we are, and we know we are fighting not flesh and blood, but evil itself. And it always starts the same way. And we all say, oh, it'll be different this time. Oh, I'll stand up. It always starts the same way with the Jews. Let's round up the Jews. Let's kill the Jews. Every time, they're the canary in the coal mine. And after they round up the Jews, they come for you. And by the time you stand up, this is an old saying, there's no one left. It just continues to eat because it is evil. And it happens by growing the government, growing the government controls, government agencies that just only answer to themselves, but remember, they're all created for your safety. Then they begin to silence those who disagree. They go and arrest those who won't go along. They shame them, make them into modern-day leopards, cut them off from polite society, banking, jobs, housing. They control history and thus control the future. Sometimes they come disguised as good guys, though. Sometimes they come disguised as messengers of Christ. But it is just a little askew and those who are paying attention understand, get behind me, Satan. I understand the concept of false prophets. I want you to do me a favor. I want everybody, close your eyes for just a minute. I want you to imagine. I want to take you back to a time where we were fighting as individuals. Imagine you're living anywhere on earth 
in the 16th or 1700s. Life is hard. It is brutal. It is cold. It is short. You are poor. You're tired. You're hungry almost all of the time. You don't really own anything because the king owns your land. And he also controls who controls that land. It's a duke or an earl or somebody that just is not in your class. That person will lord over you. There's no such thing in this time as inventors, as we know them, people who come up with new ideas, except those people who report directly to the king. Because if you come up with a new idea, the king, the earl, or the duke will take it from you and make himself rich and leave you and your family where you always have been and where you always will be. You don't get to decide what to do, how to do it, or even where to do it. You serve the king and his royal collective. You're a cog. And make no mistake, it doesn't make a difference if you live or die. And you don't dare speak out. That's death by guillotine, the rope burned at the stake, or drawn and quartered. You dream, but all you dream of is a scrap of freedom, even though you don't really even know what freedom is. The world, world overuses the word freedom and liberty now. Here's what freedom means, opportunity. Opportunity to make your own way, to succeed or fail, to be who you are, to say what is inside of you without fear of oppression, without fear of someone in the government kicking your door in at night, or warlords, or mass hysteria that turn into witch hunts, or the mobs in the street coming after you. It's an opportunity to live at peace, to have children and as many children or as few children as you want, to raise them as you see fit, for you are truly their parent. You can worship a God of your understanding, not the God that the king tells you to understand or the gods of the world, but a personal God that offers his love and his forgiveness, not through men masquerading as priests or kings, but he offers it directly to you, a God that grants peace and unconditional love, yet a God that is fierce, a God of all, the saint and the sinner, the God of life over death, a God of simple, easy laws. Don't cheat, don't lie, don't covet, don't worship the other gods of the world, money, power, fame, your job, status. Don't murder, don't riot, don't steal. And a few more, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Pray for those who hate and despise you even those that want to imprison or kill you. Pray for those. And one more, give him thanks. Remember him. Remember that it was he and he alone that set you free. It was he and he alone that released you from the bondage in Egypt. It was he and he alone that released you from sin and fear of death when he did it at the cross. You knew this. This is why you might have gathered your family or your ancestors, and they took that long journey across the sea to a new land with a new promise. A place where men and women just like you risked their lives and the lives of all they loved so that you and future generations could choose life and live free. A red-haired young man who was just over 30 scratched out a few words that changed the entire world. 
when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another and to assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect for the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. This 30-year-old man sat there and started our declaration with an apology, with a virtue. We cannot just separate. We have to tell you, you don't understand us. We hold these things to be self-evident. That all men are created equal with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That is the opening of a document that changed the world. That's why we're here. Stand up. Stand up. Say it with me. We hold these like you mean it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights, that among these are and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among deriving their just powers from the consent. Amen. 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 Somebody give me an amen. So why are you here today? Why are you here to make a difference? To take a stand? Are you committed to learning the things you only think you know? Are you committed to living a life, a fierce life that just never sits down? Are you prepared to live a life of fierce peace, of fierce love, a life of faith and in hope? Are you committed to standing for what is right even if you are all alone and the world turns its back on you. Will you stand? We hold these truths to be that all men, how many men? And they're endowed by whom? With what? And among them are one more time. Can I get an amen? amen? I want to do one more thing. I brought something with me and I want to show you. But first, I would like you to watch this video. Would you be willing to train all the days from this day to that for one chance? Just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Freedom! Good night.